Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Wednesday night edition of the Inside the Headset. Going to stay in Blount County. Going to talk to the head coach of the William Blount Governors, head coach Philip Shad Owens. How you doing tonight, Coach Shad? Doing good, doing good. You got through a rainy, rainy practice. <laughs> well, I uh, just talked to Coach Rank, and he says it's been a warm week. It has been uh, uh, unbelievably warm. Yesterday we had to go off the field for a little while because the heat index got so bad here. And um, so I had to go inside, do some meeting time, and then get back outside and get some practice done when it cooled a little bit. So it has been a strange week um, today, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes into practice, it rained. It probably rained an inch. So we went inside, met, met, and, <laughs> and then when it quit raining, we went back outside and got back after it, you know, because we have to get a preparation done. So it has been a unique week for our kids, uh, but at the same time, they, they, you know, we really had a great practice today. It was just, uh, I think we got through like at 6.30, so, uh, and we started at 3.30. So that's not, that's not my MO usually, but that's just what we had to do today. Tough game last Friday night as you uh, battled but ended up with a loss. Uh, take us a little bit through it. Dude. Yeah, um, it was tough. We really had a bad start to Stork. Uh, they took the ball. I went on a seven-minute drive to start the game. And, uh, and then we went three and out. We missed the ball on third down, and they scored again on a deep ball. Had them in second 22 and 22 and had a busted coverage. and Just started about as bad as you can start. Uh, went down to score late in the, the first half, drove down the field, really good drive, tip ball, ends up in a pick six. And so pretty much everything that could go wrong in the first half uh, did. But more importantly than that to us, they, they really they really dominated the game up front. They won the game in the trenches on both sides. And uh, that's what happened. We came out of the second half. We scored 16 points in the first seven minutes. Uh, we had the ball again, driving fourth down in three inches, and we don't get it. And that was kind of the determining factor that kind of said, okay, you're going to run out of time. But, uh, uh, you know, give Clinton credit. They did a good job. Uh, very, very big up front, dominant front. Uh, and had a lot of good athletes on the field. So uh, they played better than we did. They deserved to win, certainly. And But we learned a lot of lessons and uh, really liked the way we played in the second half. We just, uh, unfortunately, dug ourselves too big a hole. But you're telling me throughout the game, as the game continued, you, you were coaching and they were starting to respond. They weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing, but by the towards the end of the game, you were starting to see some some improvement from where it started in the first quarter. Oh, well, we, you know, honestly, if we convert the fourth down, it's going to be 33 to 23 at the end of the third quarter. <laughs> You know, so we're back in the game within 10 points. But unfortunately for us, we, for the first time in my, my career as a coach, we got stopped on fourth down and less than a yard that was in, on a quarterback stake. We, we couldn't gain three inches. We got, we got stood up, um, and we couldn't gain three inches on a fourth down quarterback stake, which has never happened. So, you know, look, um, you know, lessons learned. Uh, you can't dig yourself that kind of hole. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, our kids, you know, battled and battled and, did everything they could to get back in the game, but we just dig our, dug ourselves such a big hole that it was, uh, you know, no getting out of it at the end of the day. You said you've had a really good week of practice. You need it. You're taking on Carnes. They're one and zero. Uh, tell us a little bit about Brad Taylor and Carnes. Well, I can tell you a whole lot about Bishop, the tailback. He's been offered by Tennessee and amongst a bunch of other big power five schools at tailback. He ran for 1,800 yards as a sophomore last year. You know, he's the best tailback in Knoxville, probably the best tailback, I guess, in all of East Tennessee, probably. Uh, special player, not a real big kid, but it's very sudden in movement. Uh, they're going to give it to him by run or by swing pass probably 30 to 35 times a game, every game, sometimes more. Uh, and you'd have to find ways to limit him. You're not going to stop him. Obviously, a kid played 10 games last year, ran for 1,800 yards. Uh, so that tells you you're not going to stop him, but you have to find ways to contain him, to play with good leverage, to to tackle with in, in masses, not with singles, not single tackles, but group tackling. He's not a real big kid. I mean, he's not little, but he's not a real big kid. But he just plays with great suddenness, and he's very decisive on his runs. And, and they do a good job of what they do, which is you know running power, running ISO, running counter, running a little bit of buck sweep. They're not very complicated. Uh, but they, they, they really are good at what they do, and uh, and he is a special back. So we spent a lot of time this week, obviously, like everybody does who plays against Garns, trying to find ways to, 
to contain him and slow him down. And if we do that, then we'll have a great chance to win a football game. How do they look defensively, Coach? Well, they only gave up seven points. They played Harden Valley last week, and, and uh, they did a good job inside the 10 last week. Harden Valley moved the ball up and down the field. He got stopped twice inside the 10. It was the game until the, you know, it was the game to the very end of the game. It was one of those type of really tight games. Um, but uh, they made plays down in the red zone, and Harden Valley couldn't score. That was really the difference in the game. So, you know, I mean, we feel like obviously we can do some things. We've got to get better at our run game. Uh, we feel like we were very, you know, we're talented at the receiver and quarterback position, but we've got to, we couldn't run the ball last Friday night and, at all. And, you know, we've got to get better at that phase of our game. Well, Coach, uh, we wish you the best of luck Friday night, and, uh, and and we want you. Are you still healthy? Did you come out okay, pretty healthy, health wise? Well, we hadn't been real healthy, though. We, I mean, we didn't get anybody hurt Friday night, but we've had some sickness go through our team, and you know, we had you know three three interior guys out last week for sicknesses, and and we'll have uh you know we'll have at least two out this week for sickness, uh so. You know, we're battling that. You know, a lot of people are battling that across the state, and yes, so are we. And and uh, and so, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're as healthy as probably as anybody else is, I guess, in this day and age when all this craziness is still going on. So, uh, you know, you just you have to have a next man up kind of mentality. And and, uh, and last week that wasn't good enough. They were just able to dominate us inside. Um, the sickness really hurt us some last week because of who we were missing. But, uh, but look, that's part, that's part of the game. We all know that. So, uh, Injury-wise, we're not terrible, but we still got some sickness on the team. But uh, we're certainly trying to mitigate that as much as we can. Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Stay healthy, and we hope those other kids uh, get better. And we appreciate what you do for high school football. Thanks, Thor. Appreciate you. All right, see you. Bye.